I'm Naya Steer, Senior Manager, Retail Marketing at Juniper Networks. On behalf of Juniper and Cradle Point, I want to welcome you to Know What We Know About Retail IT. We're going to spend just about an hour together today, and we're going to discuss the latest in AI, networking, 5G, and all the amazing new services and business models retailers are either deploying today or planning to in the near future. And as we're about to find out, spoilers, all these new services require advanced connectivity and networking. So we have a lot to talk about. Our agenda today will feature the ever lively Oliver Banks, who is a retail industry author, blogger, podcaster, and consultant. He's gonna give us a tour of all of the new retail trends. Following Oliver, we'll have a panel discussion and our industry experts will discuss the retail trends they saw at the recent NRF show in New York City, how the network enables all of those innovations, and how you can prepare your network for the future. If you have questions, I encourage you to put them in the chat. We're going to get to them during the Q&A, which is going to be towards the end of the hour. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Oliver. I'm proud and delighted to be able to share with you five essential retail trends. But before we get into that, let's just recognise for a moment that sometimes retail is a little like a circus. You see, we all walk the tightrope, have our fair share of juggling to do. Occasionally, we pull out the odd magic trick. And of course, we all love a little bit of plate spinning, right? Because you see, retail is a careful balancing act. Factors like profitability, customer centricity, sustainability, and the competitive environment are all elements that we need to consider. And to help us be successful in this fine balancing act, we need to appreciate and consider the different elements that make up the business. Aspects like the business model that drives the commercial performance, the customer proposition that delivers value for consumers, the operating model that takes both of those elements and turns them into reality and the system architecture that is essentially the underlying operating system of the whole organization. And whilst we also appreciate them, we must also recognize that they're continually evolving. So I'm going to be sharing five retail trends that very much have implications against those factors. But just before we get into that, please allow me to introduce myself. If you're not already familiar with me, my name is Oliver Banks. I've been dubbed the Retail Transformation King. Formerly, I used to work at Tesco, the UK's largest supermarket. And now I'm a Retail Transformation Specialist, acting as a consultant and advisor for retailers and brands and looking to help drive change. Also, I host the Retail Transformation Show podcast I'm a globally recognized influencer, one of the world's top retail influencers and one of LinkedIn's prestigious top voices of retail. And I'm also the author of the upcoming book, Driving Retail Transformation. So I'm really excited to get into these five retail trends for today. But beware, there is a lot to go through. So we're going to be moving quickly. Buckle up. Our first trend to look at is the shifting channel mix. Now, in retail, we love talking about channels all of the time, and perhaps no more so than the big old old argument of stores versus e-commerce. But I think we need to reframe this and reconsider it in a couple of different ways. Firstly, this is not about stores versus e-commerce. This is about stores and e-commerce. Both are viable. Both can work by themselves, and both work really well together. But the other aspect to consider is they're just two channels in a world where there are multiple channels, 
loads and loads of different channels. So we must recognize that consumers are not choosing to shop by the channel. They are choosing to shop the brand. And so we must consider stores and e-commerce and many other channels. There have been some interesting channel developments this year, though. TikTok Shop has launched in the US and in other territories earlier on in the year. And it, of course, appeals to Gen Z, but also it blends in content and entertainment with commerce. And that is why it's an exciting opportunity for retailers. And the added, uh, I suppose, complication of the fulfillment option that TikTok are now offering, again, adds a consideration for, for retailers and brands thinking about TikTok as a channel. Marketplaces have been another big channel, and this was an interesting development. On one day, uh, last month it was, Iceland, a UK supermarket, announced that they were now featured on Amazon, and their range was listed alongside some other supermarkets in the UK. But on the very same day, Amazon also announced that they were listing on Deliveroo, a delivery marketplace. So we've got this blurring of the lines between a brand, a retailer and a marketplace. And it's a fascinating time right now because it really shows us that we need to be where our customers want us to be, not where we want to be, right? Apps are another fascinating channel right now. Of course, they're used for purchasing, but we can use them for so much more. Inspiration, community building, discovery, lots more to go after with apps. I particularly like what M&S are doing. They're using their app for wayfinding in store, helping to navigate to find a particular product, which is also a great bonus, not just for the everyday consumer, but for those who are either disabled or less able to navigate safely around a store. I also appreciate what Clicks are doing with their smart lockers, allowing customers not just to collect, which of course we've seen a big rise in over recent years, but also to start exploring opportunities to return to lockers, as well as, as uh, upsells and additional products in through that humanless touch point. So a great, great opportunity there. And what these are showing us is that the mobile phone, the smartphone in particular, is a gateway. It's a gateway for consumers to interact with and shop with retailers and brands. But it's also a gateway for retailers and brands to interact and engage with consumers as well. So it's an important device for everyone involved. Let's think about stores for the moment. The role of the store is changing. It may be around discovering the range, accessing service, expertise, a speedy, convenient shopping trip, or getting hands on a particular product, building a community, accessing repair and resale chances. There are so many different elements that the store can play a role in. And what we need to recognize is this role will differ for different people. And as they go on different missions, it will also change as well. And all of these different channels, I suppose, are really pointing towards one important element. The customers are in control now. And if the customers are in control, able to shop around easily across all of these different channels, we as retailers and as the retail industry need to be able to segment clearly and cater for these different customer needs. Let's move on to our second element here, the evolving role of data and AI and the, I suppose, the big computing power movement, right? Let's start with data. We love talking about data, don't we? Data, data, data. But we don't want to talk about data. What we want to talk about is in insight. What is the data telling us? But we don't want to talk about insight. What we really want to talk about is action. What is the action that we're going to take based off the data and the insight that is going to improve our business for the better in the future? That's what's important. And we need to take this action based on data in a proactive and a reactive way. Traditionally, we've been great at doing reactive uh, data analysis and data action. You know, we've waited for something to go out of stock and then we've reordered it, right? But increasingly, we're starting to take more proactive uh, action. Based on that simple example, we're now using Intel and forecasts and trends to work out when that particular product 
is going to go out of stock so we can reorder it in advance and replenish it in advance and it never happens right the future has been improved for the better we're using data and insight and driving action in one of three ways typically firstly the direction of travel we love this in the retail industry don't we where are we where are we going how are we doing secondly around personalization which we'll dive into in just a moment and thirdly around optimization finding opportunities to improve the business let's think about personalization for the moment this is a big opportunity look at this data from McKinsey consumers are increasingly expecting personalization skewed towards younger demographics as well I might add but consumers are also getting frustrated when it doesn't happen so it's important to really get after personalization because of this fact but also the fact that personalization drives loyalty right it drives repeat business but, but also loyalty and that repeat business and more data drives personalization so it's a lovely circle but when we're thinking about data and insight it's also important to add in an element of curiosity it's a really important characteristic and let me just ask you a question to take away right now when was the last time where you really said wow about data and perhaps if you can't clearly answer that you need to think about how you could be more curious as an individual and as an organization let's talk about AI surely the buzzword of 2023 no we found out this year that AI certainly excites people it scares people and it confuses people different people around the organization and of course customers as well are very confused by what is AI is AI chat GPT well yes of course it is but it's not just chat GPT is it chat GPT and mid journey you know generative AI well yes and no it's bigger than that ah so it must be the beginnings of Skynet right where humans are going to be controlled by machines perhaps <laughs> I'll let you judge that one but maybe we've been sitting on AI for years maybe Clippy do you remember Clippy from Microsoft Word and so on maybe he was uh, at the beginning of AI right but AI absolutely is confusing people and part of that I think is the terminology artificial intelligence it's a little difficult to get hold of right particularly if you're not in the technical sphere so let's reframe it right now and I encourage you to help others reframe it in their head so they can understand the opportunities with AI let's not think about artificial intelligence let's think about assisted intelligence it's a tool to help us do better things here are a few examples Wayfair's decorify app where you can take a picture of a room and it will instantly redecorate it and furnish it of course with products from Wayfair's catalog a great example Samsung and their smart fridges where a photo is taken of the food in your fridge right now and it will work out what products you've got in stock and suggest a recipe based on what you've got ready to go amazing AR another brilliant AI use case and it's getting more sophisticated over time of course brilliant in the cosmetics fashion and furniture industries in particular really AR is all about helping consumers to to imagine the product in their hands in their house perhaps on their face right AI is also working its way into the search engines here through Microsoft Bing but also Google has an equivalent helping consumers understand what it is they're looking for and recommending products businesses are using it to help uh, review reviews <laughs> Amazon are using it to create a simple digest rather than having consumers try and work out through thousands of reviews what the key themes are retailers are using it for product design able to quickly create a number of different concepts to move that product development process forward quickly and then a little later on when we're talking to factories we can use 3d mock-ups a to speed up the process to avoid shipping and costs of shipping samples around the world but also to be able to have a great collaborative conversation between the factories and the producers and the designers and the commercial team where everyone can be looking at this same 3d model at once 
improving communication. We're also using mock-ups for physical stalls, helping to clarify exactly what store are we going to create before we perhaps sign the lease or buy materials. But it's not just generative AI. We're using AI in lots of different places through the supply chain in a big way, whether that's optimizing orders or even organizing warehouses, especially if powered by automation and robotics. We're using AI to highlight preventative maintenance opportunities, stopping things breaking or fixing them before anyone notices. And we're using AI to support customer service agents as they're talking to customers, serving up relevant content, historical orders and relevant recommendations. But with all of this, it sounds fantastic, but AI is only as good as the data we feed it. But done correctly, AI can become a competitive advantage. Our third element is around clamping down on crime, surely retail's biggest headache right now, ranging from the opportunistic through the organized and the plain obtuse. This is a TikTok organized mass shoplifting session. Fortunately, the police caught this one before it happened, but it's only a matter of time before a retailer is literally gonna be hit hard by this sort of chaotic behavior. And it's easy to think that stock loss and shrink and shoplifting is driven by the cost of living crisis. But if you look at the data from NRF here, here this is a long-term trend. And there is a very obvious business impact of crime. But we must also recognize there is a very real human impact of crime as well, mental, physical, and emotional. So retailers are looking to reduce crime, of course, right now through tagging products like butter and milk, through to creating plexiglass barriers to stop the would-be shoplifter and perhaps the would-be customer as well. We're arming associates and colleagues with cameras like police have. We're also showing CCTV to customers to demonstrate that they're caught on camera. And of course, we're using AI to challenge and understand the behaviors, analyzing the likelihood of this particular person stuffing a product into their product when they shouldn't be, into their pocket, I should say, I should say. We're also using facial recognition increasingly to find suspected or prolific shoplifters and alert the store teams. So consider how tech can help to prevent or detect crime, but we still need people on the front line, whether that's security guards or colleagues in store. So also consider how can tech support or protect those frontline teams. Now let's think about diversifying the business because we know traditional retail is a low margin game. And again, classically, we've got around this through expansion, elements like moving into different countries, categories, or perhaps own brand products. But increasingly, new business models are the growth opportunity. Look at this data from Bain, which is showing on the right-hand side that by 2030, 50% of retailers' profits are going to be driven by these new business models. So we need to think in a disruptive way about elements like retail media, retail as a service, and even expanding into new industries. But considering this, how can you make the most of what you already have to scale and accelerate? Think about valueless assets, things we know are great, but serve no real value to the P&L. Retail media is a great example. We're using the valueless asset of footfall and traffic to help raise awareness with other companies. And of course, lots of people are doing retail media right now. Another great opportunity is retail as a service. The valueless asset here, your operating model, your capabilities and your capacity as well. Lots of companies serving brands and retailers. And increasingly moving into new industries. Amazon are a great benchmark here using the valueless asset of their brand and their reputation to move into everything from healthcare through to technology and of course a little bit of movie making as well. So consider how tech enables you to make the most of your valueless assets. And finally let's think about operating effectively and focusing on what matters most because with so many different opportunities it's easy to see a mirage ahead of you. It's easy to think about this wonderful opportunity on the horizon. And when you're focused in on 
all of the chaos around you, suddenly you look up and that wonderful opportunity has gone. And there is nothing left for you. So consider what matters most. Elements like offering a fair price and great value. Elements like an assortment that gives customers options, but not overwhelms. Having products ducks in stock where and when they're needed. Offering a delightful experience and excellent caring service. Operating efficiently in a way that gets things done. And of course, delivering a bottom line profit. To operate effectively and efficiently, we need to focus on the quick wins that deliver tangible results. So let's wrap this up and think about overcoming the hidden IT challenges right now. We know retail is a careful balancing act with lots of factors. So take away three things. Take away the fact that we need to prioritize. We need to choose what we're doing and as a coincidence, what we're not doing as well. We need to be intentional with our actions, driving in a very specific way forwards. And we need to be continually learning from these experiences, good and bad, and applying that learning as well, I might add. And if we do these things, then we can drive positive, meaningful change, and we can make the retail industry a huge amount better. So thank you so much for your attention. I can't wait to hear your thoughts, your feedback, and of course your questions as well. Do feel free to reach out on LinkedIn as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Oliver. Next up on our agenda is a panel discussion on how AI native networks enable those fiercely innovative services that Oliver just mentioned. Recently back from the big NRF show in New York City, our panel today consists of our host, Yarek Machi, Retail Practice Director for Juniper Networks, Brian Welch, Senior Network and Security Architect of Juniper, Todd Selbo, Senior Product Marketing Manager and our resident indoor location services expert, and our friend Troy Schatzley, Strategic Account Manager at CradlePoint. With that, Yarek, I'll pass it to you. So hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, we were all at the NRF Expo a few weeks ago. So I would like to start with the question about the retail trends. So what retail trends did you see at the NRF this month? And actually, which of them were the most interesting for you and why? Maybe I will ask uh, Brian to start. Sure. Well, I think much like we're hearing in the industry every day, it's all about AI. Um, and, it, and it fits well with the narrative of, of Juniper's AI native networking because the more AI enabled devices that you get within a store or retail footprint, whether it's tracking of, of uh, shoppers or of the individual devices that are on the shelf, the network is even more important than ever. And so I think Juniper really has an advantage in the industry to be able to help people with network solutions like location services and you know just a better overall shopper experience within the retail footprint. Thank you. Uh, how about you, Troy? Similarly, uh, AI is what's driving the need for the networks. We all know that broadband and connectivity is going to be paramount for that. That's where Cradle Point and Juniper Mist come in, providing the backbone so that we can deliver those AI ap applications. We can deliver the customer experience or the consumer experience in retail. Thank you. And Todd, what would you like to add? Yeah, no, uh, I know I saw a lot in the IoT space. So a lot of uh, intriguing uh, innovations for like shelf labeling, uh, electronic shelf tagging, shelf monitoring, where they're putting video cameras on the shelf. So when you walk up, you know, they're actually monitoring to see if there's who's coming up to see a product on the shelf. They're doing uh, inventory control via the computer vision there as well. And obviously all, all that plays into the IOT connectivity and the network connectivity, since most of this is gonna end up being wireless. So it's it's really intriguing how they're um, using the, the network and using it to actually service the customers down on the floors, you know, at the shelf, at the shelf mm -hmm. label and on the aisle. So that was, that was a lot of intriguing uh, innovations there from several companies that I visited. 
Well, perfect. Thank you very much. So, you know, well, we established that artificial intelligence was one of the mega trends everybody was talking about. But what I would like to ask is, what do you think about the artificial intelligence in retail? Where do you think this is going? And um, thought maybe I will ask you to start. Sure. No, I mean, we see a lot from our customer base using AI in our Juniper Mist platform, where they're actually seeing real user experience improvements. Uh, you know, companies like The Gap, they're reducing their truck rolls for equipment servicing. Uh, Halfords in, in the UK uh, is doing, um, you know, they've decreased their ticket counts by 100%. So their service tickets. So what it's really doing is improving the user experience via AI um, and just really monitoring that client to cloud activity where the users don't have to, you know, the network managers aren't engaging to have to resolve these problems where an AI platform can provide far, far more guidance to those network managers and be able to solve customer, real customer experience problems. No, that, that, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. And, and I see that you know we are talking about the ai built into our solutions retail as well so um i believe invest in ai uh, which is not only covering the networking part of uh, yeah. their activities so so yes well thank you um brian how about your perspective on ai in retail some of the things that I saw around the tracking of, of shopper patterns and dwell times, for instance, so that they could send associates to help a customer if they notice that they're stopped in an area for a certain amount of time. They're utilizing um, AI on their systems to, to have a better shopping experience to make sure that they're monetizing you know, and in, in increasing their revenue so that they're, they don't have customers that are confused or, or that need help. So they're, they're util, utilizing it in a, in a different way in that instance. And then also the, the virtual shopping in-store experience where, you know, it's in some ways the, um, what do you call it? The changing room may, may go away depending on this technology where you can go up to a smart mirror in a store with clothes and, and see how these different clothes look on you without even need to go in a changing room. And all of these things require the best type of connectivity and store experience, um, you know, through that in infrastructure provider. So it, it all fits together. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that, Brian. I know a lot of it, um, we're talking a lot about the in-store experiences as well, and, but it also enables omni-channel um, so that these shoppers can, um, buy product online pick it up in store get it delivered they're actually using the uh the stores as mini warehouses to support product and obviously that there's lots of tools in the space for enabling that as well so inventory control or inventory management um loss prevention or retail you know retail theft management as well that comes up along with that servicing the local customers like said via apps or locations as they traverse the store and things like that. But uh, really in enabling, there's lots of tools out there that we're showing AI to enable the omni-channel experience as well. So customers can buy it wherever they want. And if it's in the store, if it's online, wherever they work, they're, you know, they're, they're using that AI experience. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is a very valid point because um, there is a lot of data, inventory data uh, that retailers can use to optimize inventory using artificial intelligence. And so it's not only front of the store, but also back of the store and, and integrating it all together. And Troy, um, I also would like to um, have your perspective on um, implementation of artificial intelligence uh, in retail. Yeah, as you walked the floor, it was really interesting. You you saw a lot about what's the convenience to the consumer and time management. So you think about like just pay or just walk out, where AI is going to really help service the consumer so that we can get in and get out and get things done. So that helps augment time management. 
I attended a couple of panels um, speaking about 5G and AI experience where customers are talking about their retailers con communicating with the consumer, have real-time data in their ear in an iPod or at your uh, earbud, whatever that vehicle is, but to be able to communicate with them. And if a customer asked a question about this, there are related or upsell components. So it was really about technology exchange or data exchange, but the AI was going to deliver that real time to the retailer talking to the consumer. So as you talked about shelf management, life management, asset management, all those things all okay. come into play. So I think it's very exciting yeah. as a consumer to be able to think about walking into retail, but also you think about how it hits brick and mortar, quick serve restaurants, digital menu boards, loyalty programs, okay. it's all coming. Perfect, yes. And you also mentioned um, 5G. And 5G is becoming more and more important in, in retail. Could you share with us a few examples of um, 5G implementations? Sure. Yeah, 5G is very interesting. I mean, we've all heard about it. So we, as a company, have spent the last couple of years talking about what it is and how to deliver that as part of a wide area network connectivity strategy. We're all aware of, of 5G because we grandma saw it on a Super Bowl ad from a carrier. So we know what it is, but how to utilize it in retail is the now next evolution. As the speeds and the throughput become part of your WAN, wireless WAN, fixed wireless access, SD-WAN strategies, it's, it's a connection component that starts to become pervasive. It's going to be fast to market. It's going to be scalable. And it's going to provide some of that connectivity strategy that retailers haven't had as you look to do rollouts and deployments across the country. So the value of 5G is going to be very economic as well, especially today as the carriers now participate in good economic 5G data plans. So that's the other thing is the carriers own the network for the 5G. So we want to participate on that network, but we want it to be economical. So we're seeing those delivery components, and that's where Cradle Point plays. Oh, thank you. Um, and, you know, from, from your perspective, the, the most interesting um, deployment of 5G, could you share uh, your perspective on that with us? Sure. We've got several retailers in, in, you know, in the brick and mortar side or store and store. So the use case varies, but it's still retail. Mm -hmm. Kiosks, machine to machine. So cellular connectivity and 5G is in, across all of those type branch solutions. We've got it predominantly for failover or your business continuity. Retailing, point of sale transactions, those things are very critical to your business. You have to be able to have the, the secure connections. And if you lose those terrestrial connections, we want to fail over to a broadband circuit or a, a wireless WAN solution. So Cradle Point predominantly is played in that market. But as 5G and the carriers do much more of a pervasive build out and the utilization of multiple carriers at the same time, now 5G starts to become of interest for a primary connection where we can start to look at how do we play in your SD-WAN rollouts where broadband and cellular are both primary and then can we start to, through SD-WAN technologies, bond that to give really high throughput and payload? The next thing that's going to be very exciting in the market is something called standalone networks and 5G slicing. We will now be able to do things in the air off of towers with multiple carriers that we're going to be able to really slice that spectrum in that air and give it much like quality of service type solution sets for voice, video, data, et cetera, but it really starts to make it a much more pervasive network opportunity and it's wireless and it's easy to deploy. And Brian, would you be willing to give us a short explanation? What do we do actually with artificial intelligence at Juniper Networks? Sure, love to. So the, the difference that, that we bring is really showing you how the user is experiencing your network, not how the network is experiencing the network. And so we're pulling over 150 different data points from every client connected to that network every minute. And so we're looking at this data and how the experience is, whether it's they're roaming from you know access point to access point, or it could be your, your SD-WAN solution is experiencing congestion on the link. And so we're, we're able to make a, a more intelligent decision of, of how that client's experiencing the network, giving you the data to proactively 
go in and fix a solution that may that may have a problem even to the point now that we just we just announced a, 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 a great enhancement to our platform which is going to be able to do um, digital testing simulating a, a a person or a client device on the network so that maybe when you know during the middle of the night there's some failure that happens well without some some kind of user traffic on the network you don't know that there's a problem so we're going to be able to test the network 24 hours a day so that when when the the associates come in in the mornings to say open the store we're, we're guaranteeing them you know a, a good network of which that they're going to have a good experience and their shoppers are going to have a good experience through through that day instead of having a panic situation where oh my gosh there's a there's a problem there's an outage we've already known about it we've already called the people in to help fix it before the day starts and not to mention the you know unique radio resource management that we bring to the to the table which is the equivalent of having you know wireless experts on staff looking at your your each store 24 hours a day seven days a week and so we're able to make small changes in tuning to that environment to make sure that when the shoppers are traversing the the floor and and you know trying to get assistance or or even using wayfinding that they're able to get that that better experience well thank you and i don't know todd if if there is anything else to add yeah no definitely i remember um you know listening to oliver speak he brought up he used the term assisted intelligence instead of artificial intelligence which i thought was interesting because obviously we have a lot in our platform uh with our location services right that uh enables you know customers to to have far better user engagement with the store if they're you know in brick and mortar um you know the, they can actually have interactive maps we can give you paths to you know if you're trying to find the you know the battery section in a drugstore you know we can give you you know that data where um you know a lot of retailers are enabling that through you know their app you know their mobile applications which almost every retailer has today that they're able to import data from us and provide customer um enhanced customer experiences that way with push notifications like you know online coupons if they're in the produce department they can tell them about sales that are going on things like that but we are using um AI and machine learning to help navigate those those customers that we can track through the store through a mobile application and give them guidance as they as they proceed through their purchase you know day you know in the in the grocery store perhaps so so in in addition to the ability to help retailer to optimize operations and well save cost from that perspective, what you're talking about is also helping retailers to look how they can optimize the operations to generate better customer experience and mm -hmm. through that increase revenue, have more customers or or happier customers exactly. and buying more often. Exactly. Right. It's it's you're gonna get them if you can give them a coupon when they're walking down an aisle, maybe they'll buy something more. So it's definitely uh, yeah. another revenue stream that can be created through the through the mobile apps. Perfect. And 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 you know, just from, from my perspective, and um, retail media network is becoming more and more important. Um and and this is retailer as a advertising channel and if we combine this um, opportunity for additional revenue for retailers with what you were talking about with uh, location services then this becomes even stronger value uh, for customer and stronger value for advertiser because the advertising can reach customers in the best possible moment when they are in right. the specific area of the store. Yeah, and I think that's part of it too, is the uh, the, the costs are obviously coming down on uh, vi remote video displays and paper white displays. So they can put these on shelves at a, you know, at a cost efficient manner to your point, advertise to the, to the customers in, in brick and mortar. So it's definitely a trend that's going on and they're using AI to make sure the right ads are going to the right people. Mm -hmm. 
No and even if they're going to go buy a flashlight, something as simple as that, and then do that mobile experience to have them show, I, you know, I noticed that you're in the flashlight section. Would you like to see specials on batteries or, you know, national battery supplier has a special on, you know, batteries today. Would, would you like assistance on how right. to go find the right battery? Engagement, things right. like that are, are now possible. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, uh, and and I think this is also uh, really closely related to interacting with customers uh, through different channels. Because you know what we all like is to have uh, the same experience, no matter how we interact with uh, our favorite retailer or favorite brand, and. We don't want to be perceived as a different person in store and different person on our mobile app and different person on our home computer. We want to be perceived as the same individual and just shopping in a different way. So, you know, with that ability, I think retailers will be much better and um, interacting with us um, that way. So we, we were talking a lot about what we have seen and what is happening right now. Uh, but probably the last question um, that, that I have for you is, uh, what are the important things that the network will enable in the future? So what's the future of retail in this area? And, Thought, would you be yeah. happy to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off. I mean, the biggest part of it is really from a highest level, it's IoT, right? You're going to have all these different kinds of devices on your network, be um, wired or wireless cameras, shelf tagging, uh, you know, obviously access points in the ceiling, wireless devices, you know, handheld scanners, uh, POS point of sale type devices, everything's either wired or wireless. So the network's going to have to support far more devices than it has in the past. Um, so I think that's a big key to it. Um, and even same thing, even in warehouses where as well, right? Just the sheer number of robots and transport devices and forklifts and push carts, everything's going to have uh, wireless capability, be it you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or other other methods. So I think it's just making sure your networks can support that capacity is going to be a big part of going forward. And AI is going to be a huge part of it. Right to make sure the network's managed properly, and when something bad happens, someone knows about it as soon as possible. Or as De Brian alluded, alluded to, you know, having a, a, a proactive clients that will go out and tell us when there's a DNS failure or a, a, an ARP server that goes down, things like that, so that you can be more proactive in in supporting the network. Mm -hmm. So what so what what you are saying is that there will be more data more devices so mm -hmm. it'll be really critical yeah. to get all of that connected yeah, yeah it makes sense yeah, definitely and um, and troy uh what's your perspective of the future of networking uh, in retail yeah i'll augment what todd said i think it is iot it is the sensor components uh, there was at nrf there was a panelist that they mentioned that they have over two hundred thousand iot right. devices to manage things like spoilage of a refrigerator did a fridge get closed and if it didn't get closed, can you get alarmed on that so that we don't have overnight spoilage if you didn't do that? And it also stops the retailers from having to go look at these things that like say refrigerators every day. And it gave them time back. It gave them, let's say 30 minutes of their day back. So you multiply mm -hmm. that time headcount. Yeah. So the efficiencies of what's gonna happen are gonna be spectacular. And there's a huge human component. We're gonna give people time back so they could be more productive. If you augment that with the customer experience, the consumer experience, and what AI is going to bring, it's all going to drive connectivity, and it's all going to have to be very solid, pervasive, and to have the intelligence to say there's something wrong with the network before the network has a problem. That's where we're all headed. Perfect. Yes. So I think in many cases, we are already there with our uh, mm -hmm. Juniper solution. So that's 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 good. And. Um, Brian, anything you would like to add? Yeah, these all of these devices that we're adding to the network, they all consume bandwidth. And so it, that makes that connectivity that much more important. And 
making efficient use of connectivity from these what are becoming essentially um, you know data centers inside of a store they have to process all this information they have to send information to the cloud so having a, a clean highly efficient connectivity from from your carrier is going to be even more critical coming forward yes and and you know we see more and more implementations of those frictionless stores that you can walk in take whatever you want from um, a shelf and then leave and uh, you'll be automatically charged uh, for for what, what you were buying and and that requires quite a lot of and um, analytics which is taking place in a cloud environment and it requires the data from the store to go to the cloud and return uh, instantly so that requires connectivity and we kind of get used to those innovations which make life easier so there is no coming back there will be more demand for data more demand for uh, for for better connectivity, and you know we're talking about innovation and 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 data and more devices. One of the things that I believe is becoming more and more important as well is um, around sustainability. Um, what what do you think? How do you think uh, we will be able to help um, retailers with uh, sustainability? In Brian, would you be uh, happy to uh, start, start, sure. start answering that question? Well, I think it 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 first starts with you know the the actual hardware itself. So being mindful of the types of components you put into a device and making sure that those things are are sustainable um, as much as possible, which Juniper and Cradle Point both do today, and then being able to monitor the power usage of those devices to see which things are are utilizing the most types of power and then being able to intelligently uh, power those devices so you know, being so we could take our ai and and be able to see where what parts of the network are utilized over trends of time and we can see that well from you know 10 p.m till 2 a.m there's nobody in the store until this stocking people come in at you know maybe 2 33 a.m to get the store ready and so to be able to to intelligently uh, you know manage the power of the devices in that way is uh, going to be critical as well you think of you know all these devices require connectivity that connectivity requires power so they're all interrelated perfect makes sense and and, and um I believe it's a little bit also like with cars, which we can all understand that the old car uh, is less efficient than than the than the new car. So you know it's it's similar with uh, with um, any networking device in in the retail environment. And um, Troy, um, what's what's your perspective on on sustainability? What's similar, I think part of, as you just mentioned with cars, we also have to be responsible to our customers as they go through refresh cycles because we need to manage the product life cycle. We're always going to have bigger, better, better. If, you know, the old joke, if you're going to wait for the ultimate product, you're going to wait ultimately. But meanwhile, mm -hmm. you've got a refresh cycle that you need to get some kind of a time frame out of it to appreciate the ROI and your CapEx spend or if you put it under OpEx. So we've got to be very wary about that with our customers so that they continue to come back when the time is right to do a refresh and the CapEx makes sense. But we've, we've got to manage those kind of things because then that product comes back into the landfill. We need to make sure we've got responsible recycling programs. And those are all things we all want to do in the industry period. And I think Juniper Mist and Cradle Point do a pretty good job of that. Wonderful. And Todd, anything to add? Yeah, the only other thing I saw, you know, obviously there's big trends at, at NRF was in inventory management, right? So if a, if stores, if retailers can manage their inventories better, they're not going to get stuck with a year end, you know, all the summer clothes where they bought too much of this. 
because they have more data that they're running across the network. So they're managing their inventories closer. So they're not buying excess inventory and things like that. So they don't need to overstock. So obviously that saves them, you know, actual business value, but as well as they're not putting, you know, last year's model into the landfills either, or, you know, trying to mm -hmm. get rid of excess inventory, you know, and losing money on it, but they're actually going to manage their inventories better and not have all that redundancy built into it. Um, so I see that as well. And obviously everything going wireless, you know, you're running less cabling, less wiring in a store. So just from the base level, you're running less wires. You know, there's not as much cat five cabling running through that store. You're going to save mm -hmm. money and, you know, and help improve the environment as well. Just from that Perfect. simple take. So. Thank you. And um, thank you. That makes perfect sense. And as you said, having too much inventory is bad because then um, they are not able to sell it. And then, then they have to go with uh, decreasing prices, but not having enough uh, is also not good. Right. So, so being right. able to use the data in intelligent way in order to predict right. as much as possible right. uh, the inventory Stock levels, you which are critical. Yeah. Exactly. Stock what you need and don't stock what you, you're not going to sell. So, oh, yeah, makes sense. Perfect. Wonderful. I think we are running out of time. So thank you very much uh, for a very interesting discussion. I really appreciate your insight. And now we will have a few minutes uh, for uh, everybody uh, participating in the webinar to ask their question. Thank you. Perfect. So um, I have a question from one of the participants, and it's about um, scalability. So um, he's saying that there is a growing number of applications for retail, and, and AI will actually grow that uh, amount going forward. And his question is how we are preparing the network uh, for this future growth. Brian, I would like to ask you to uh, start answering that question, if it's okay. Sure, no problem. Yeah, there's a number of different ways in which uh, specifically Juniper is handling the problem. And it starts within the, the data center from the AIML clusters and the partnerships that we have with the leaders in that industry and, and supporting those, those new Ethernet-based protocols. And then it goes to... Um, the infrastructure of the store itself. So the mis Juniper mismanaged uh, campus fabric architectures are, are nearly infinitely scalable to support all the devices. And then it also goes into how we uh, build our cloud, you know, a modern microservices based cloud so that, you know, every week there's changes without disruption, um, similar to how Netflix or even Amazon themselves to their uh, infrastructure architecture so that, you know, all of these container based uh, elastic services are, are scaling out automatically through the network to support, to support uh, any number of users. Thank you. I don't know, Troy, if you would like to add something from your 5G perspective. You bet. That's the, one of the assets of 5G, it's very scalable and it's convenient in time to market. So we can do 5G wireless WAN connectivity, day one connections overnight. We've got more spectrum to use. There's a more towers being built. So overall, the scalability of a 5G infrastructure network is way more advanced than potentially what's in the ground in the typical copper or optics that we use for broadband. So scalability is absolutely an asset of 5G. Perfect. Um Todd, anything to add, or can I go to the next question? Yeah, no, feel, feel free to move on to the next one. Go ahead, sure. Okay. And yeah, I see the a few next other question questions. I have here is about um, network security. We didn't talk about it. So um, could we um, could we answer the security aspect of our solution as well? address security aspect of our solution. Yeah, absolutely. So 
we we base our store infrastructure on industry standards and it can even start with something as simple as or simple not as simple to deploy but uh, something like group-based policy which allows for micro segmentation of devices and all the way into um, a cloud managed next-gen firewall like the juniper srx um, and then even into how our cloud is built so we have a security posture check every week about the secure uh, from a third party about the security of our own cloud. In addition to the security posture checking and analysis that Amazon themselves do. So that's that particular part is typically way more than any one individual enterprise or retailer can, can do on themselves. So it's a very security minded, not just architecture, but um, you know, network itself. Well, thank you. Um... We have another question, and this is about the uh, data that our access points are collecting from all devices um, connected. And the question is if we have some examples of the data that access points are collecting and how they are collecting it and, and how they can identify users and, and, and challenges in the network. I guess that's another one for me. So yes, yes, you are very we, popular, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just about the the MAC address to identify the users. It's we're taking and correlating the location, dwell time. You know, of course, MAC address. Even though with randomized MAC, uh, there's in, uh, imprints of the device itself, the version of OS, the browser you're using or version of the app, there's all these different correlated events to be able to tell who the user is uh, or the device, maybe not necessarily who the, who the person themselves are, but um, it's it's the, that type of data that, that we're able to correlate. But in the specifics around the data points, we're gathering things like their RSSIB or RSSI, the um, DHCP responses, the DNS responses, um, you know, there's a there's a whole slew of this information that we're collecting about about the transaction of the of the client's experience uh, through the network, and even to the point to where if we detect that there's bad transactions that happen, we're going to do an automatic packet capture so that we can have further analysis. You know, packets don't lie. We're able to give you that insight automatically, um, and just the metadata for those security minded. We don't take the actual payload data uh, out of the package, just the metadata to give um, your experts the data they need to do that uh, in-depth analysis. Uh, yes, and 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 we, we collect the data on the level of access points, but on, on the level of in each and every uh, networking device to make sure that we deliver better experience for, uh, for, for people who are connected or who are trying to get uh, connected with the network. Perfect. Thank you very much. I think we are running out of time, so we will answer the other questions um, on on email, and you can also contact us um, directly. Uh, we will be happy to answer any questions that that you that you throw at us. So thank you very much for your time, and well, talk to you soon. <laughs>